audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Coming up today on The Story. It would have been probably six months before I'd met Aaron and I just, I, I was really comfortable with the idea that it wasn't going to happen or that it may not never, you know, ever happen. And so when I met him, I didn't like get overworked about it. I just thought this guy seems really lovely and I'd love to get to know him, but I didn't go too many steps forward, which is unlike me because, you know, in most things in life, I, I go too many steps forward. You watch a lot of Hallmark Christmas movies. Let's just be uh, honest. Don't we <laughs> love the idea of a fairy tale though? <laughs> the Story. G'day, I'm Jimmy Colfax. Welcome to The Story. Well, a few years ago on the program at Christmas time, we spoke with the singing flight attendant, who was known then as Bethany Stagg. She had achieved worldwide fame when a video of her singing a Christmas carol in an airport lounge went viral. Well, she went on to tell us all the things that happened to her after that, including getting an all-expenses-paid trip to Richard Branson's private island for her and her family. But that was not the best thing that came out of that Christmas Carol video experience. They could definitely make a Hallmark Christmas movie out of Bethany's story because we ended last time wondering if there would be a fairy tale ending to her story. Today, Bethany will tell us what happened as she gets us updated and sings another Christmas Carol for us. Once again, she's chatting with Eric Scadamo. Bethany, welcome to the program. Thank you, Eric. It's nice to have you welcome me back. Glad to have you back on the program. And so, as you just heard in the introduction, did we sum that up right? Yep. That was pretty spot on. Although, Eric, I was never a flight attendant. I was I was a ground crew or guest services, as they would have, would have called me back then. Okay. So, that's why you were wearing the outfit that looks like a flight attendant, but actually that's kind of the lounge uniform. Is that right? Well, with that particular airline, it was the the uniform is exactly the same. The only real way to tell the difference between someone who's on the ground and someone who's a flight attendant is simply the scarf that they wear, oh. or in the men's case, the tie. It's very, very tiny detail. Um, but a flight attendant also has a, a wing pin that they put on to just just doing distinguish a little bit between the two. So it's okay. very hard for anybody else to know unless you're in the company. Okay, and going back to that time, you spontaneously sang a Christmas carol after you got permission. You sang that in the lounge and somebody filmed it, kind of refresh our memory. What happened? Yeah, so um, I think it was it was coming close to Christmas and I was about to have a couple of days off. I think it was actually quite a number of days off. And having a love for Christmas, I, I think I pondered it a little bit, feeling a little anxious, thinking, do I do it? Do I not do it? And then I quickly handed my phone to a friend and said, you know, just just video this and and I had asked my manager and he said you know I'm not going to say yes or no but it's up to you and I thought well (laughs) I'm pretty I'm pretty headstrong at times so I decided (laughs) that would be a yes (laughs) have yourself a merry little Christmas let your heart be light so you did it. Did you have any idea that it would go all over the world and you'd get all that fame and notoriety? Oh, none. Not at all. Especially because, um, I mean, my social media has been private the whole time. So to have it, you know, take off the way it did, not a chance that I expect it would do that. Okay. And now we get to the kind of Hallmark Christmas movie aspect of your story. Tell us who contacted you that helped it go viral. So, um, a man by the name of Aaron, he was a journalist at the Herald Sun and he contacted me through Instagram. Um, and he said, hi, you know, I'm a, I'm a journalist with, um, you know, the Herald, which is a fairly well-known newspaper within Melbourne. And, Mm -hmm. um, it's funny because my my senses go off and I'm thinking, no, this is just a scam. This guy doesn't, you know, work for a paper. He's not a <laughs> journalist. So I kind of was very wary and I, I had a quick search through his page and had a look online and thought, oh, okay, so he actually is a journalist. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I contacted him after he'd asked if he could maybe write a story, being Christmas time, the perfect thing to have in a paper and online just to give a bit of, I guess, happiness to everybody um and I, and, I, and so i agreed and i said yeah okay I, let's do a a quick interview and it was only a 10 minute interview mm-hmm. but you know the next day it was in the paper it was online and that's kind of where it just took off from there yeah so the story goes viral and as we heard in the introduction the owner of the airline you worked for at that time sent you on an all expense paid trip to his island but that wasn't the best part Tell us a little bit more about that journalist. 
I agree. I, I say the same thing to everybody. You know, they would think that a, a private island would be yeah the I high guess, point, the absolute high point. But I mean, for me, it, it was you know definitely not the high point compared to what happened. I um a little while after everything took off and went viral and I, I kind of let it simmer down a little bit and I, I'd been thinking about the journalist a bit and I, I kind of just I could not get his his face out of my head and I couldn't really stop thinking about him and and I just thought oh maybe I just I send him a quick message to say thank you and, and I actually just sent him a very quick message saying thank you so much for seeing something in quite you know what I thought was quite a humble little video of a Christmas carol um you know, even if nothing comes of it, I just wanted to say thank you. And it turns out that he'd been relatively busy writing and, and being quite involved in the Australian Open at that time of the year. And so he had actually thought, oh, I just have to get through these couple of weeks of the Australian Open and then I will actually message her myself. But I got in first um, <laughs> because I'm quite an Im- impatient person. Um, and he got back to me pretty quickly. And I guess long story short, he just said, look, would you like to have a coffee? And I said, yep, I'd love to catch up for a coffee. And so we did. Um, And we had a coffee and we sat down and talked about all crazy things, including crop circles. I'm not even sure why, but we did (laughs) in the space of an hour. And I guess, yeah, even longer story short, we never stopped seeing each other from then. Okay. We don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves here. (laughs) So what would Aaron say? Was he interested at that point? Yeah, I think from the the first moment he saw the video, he definitely was was interested. Um, if if Aaron was speaking, he would kind of be saying, "Well, I mean, you know," he would say he would comment on my looks, and he would be saying, "You know, this girl is not only you know talented; is she's pretty." And you know, he was a single man at the time, mm-hmm. and and he, you know, I guess both of us being single at the time were quite hopeful to think, you know, you never know what could happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so you you know. We were both searching for someone in a way. And I guess, yeah, that's what he would say. He was interested, but mm-hmm. he isn't as forward as me. And so um, <laughs> I, I often joke with him now saying, I still can't believe you even had the guts to ask me out for coffee because that for him even would have been like a really quite a nerve wracking thing. Yeah. You told me in the past that he's a bit of an introvert. Is that right? Very, very much so. I'm massively an extrovert and just will talk to people all day long, whereas Aaron is the kind of person that really doesn't <laughs> need to have people surrounding him to to be fulfilled. Yeah, and, and he's more of a writer. You said he was a journalist at that time, so expressing himself in the written form is more what he's comfortable with. Yeah, I would say that's definitely true, and he's excellent at it. And you mentioned last time that in that brief interview, you knew that he was a Christian somehow, is that right? Yeah, I think in our 10-minute interview on the phone, he, he must have asked me, you know, if I sung anywhere else, and, and back then, I pretty much would just be singing in church and on the worship team. and So so he knew you were a Christian. He did, but he very sneakily put into that 10-minute interview, oh, rep, he, I think he said something like, oh, yes, yeah, um, I, um, I, I go to church elsewhere as well. And so he, mm-hmm. he, like, he, he just kind of planted the seed that he also went to church. Okay, so you knew he was a church-going young man, but you didn't yeah. know the extent of his faith at that point. Not at all. No, not at all. And then you got together for that first date for an hour, and did faith come up? It, um, I believe it definitely came up. I can't. Rem- I can't. Somewhere in between it. crop circles and whatever else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like we talked about everything, which is which is funny because, like I said, he's quite introverted, and I mean, he's not a huge talker. But we were able to, you know, it's when opposites attract that type of thing, and where mm-hmm. we complement each other for the things that. He's not as strong in, I'm not as strong in, but, you know, we complement each other. But, um, yeah, we definitely, I would have found out, you know, what did that mean that he went to church, mm-hmm. what what his, what faith meant to him. And that, you know, we'd, we'd been brought up in very similar, you know, faith-filled families. Mm-hmm. And and I suddenly thought this, this man is actually quite similar in, in thinking to me. And we, yeah, we share very, very strong faith values, mm-hmm. um, but also keep it really real. Mm-hmm. And being very real, he found out about you that you were a single mother, and he is fine with that. He did. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of the type of person that meets someone and everything comes out in one, <laughs> one go, <laughs> unless it's something that I really hold close to my chest. I think it's more that he, he thought, well, you can't just, you know, shut a door because mm-hmm. of one particular thing. So he was open to the idea of, you know, having a coffee, um, I think, you know, even though we both didn't go into that particular date thinking of it 
as a date or, or that it would extend to anything else. I think there's just that little bit of hope that, you you know, when you're both searching for someone and especially both when you, you're both Christians or you've both got this particular faith um, that's really important to you and knowing that you have stumbled across somebody in um, a world that can be very, very hard to stumble mm. across someone that is like-minded. Mm. Yeah, I think we both were just hopeful. Let, let's just be honest about it. You, at that point, were a single mother and you didn't know whether love would come your way again. No, I, I think I, I suddenly, after a few years, I, I think I suddenly thought, you know, maybe my my role is to just be the best mum that I can be and maybe that's what God has planned for me right now. So, I I mean, it's pretty incredible the way God works. I, It would have been probably six months before I'd met Aaron and I just, I, I was really comfortable with the idea that it wasn't going to happen or that it may not never, you know, ever happen. And so, when I met him, I didn't, over, like get overworked about it. I just thought this guy seemed really lovely and I'd love to get to know him, but I didn't, I didn't go too many steps forward, which is mm-hmm. unlike me because that's, I'm, you know, in most things in life, I, I go too many steps forward. You watch a lot of Hallmark Christmas movies. Let's just be honest. Uh, don't we <laughs> love the idea of a fairy tale though? <laughs> okay. Well, the fairy tale continues because you continue dating with each other and then when we talked to you last time, it was the end of 2018, toward the end of 2018, and you said that you were a couple at that point. You were boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah. But Yeah, so we'd probably been dating for a while at that point. But I remember at the end of that interview, I kind of encouraged Aaron. I said something like, Aaron, you know, you could complete this fairy tale ending. You know, you could do that. So I take full credit for what happened next please tell us what happened next (laughs) (laughs) so so what happened next was so i think he was coming actually coming up to his 40th birthday and i think a lot of his friends were thinking oh my goodness imagine if he proposed during his birthday all family all friends around and so you know in the back of my mind i thought oh there's no way he would do something like that he's way too much of an introvert to do something that big in front of everybody so you know i knew that wouldn't have happened but um the month after his 40th birthday, you know, he took myself and my daughter down to the beach that we would normally go to, um, that we at that point had called Emerald Beach because of the colour of the beautiful water. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were just taking photos. He, he loves taking photos. He's quite good at it. And he'd set up a tripod and he was spacing us out because everything has to be just so, and which was absolutely not abnormal i'm used to him liking things in a particular way in that way and, <laughs> and so he'd, he'd actually handed the camera to me at one point because you can see it you can see the frame on the camera and so he'd kind of had mia my daughter spaced out and then he'd put me somewhere and then he goes okay you just you hold that and i looked down at the at the frame and he'd had to go to his bag and i was holding it and i'm like all right and i kind of i think i told mia to do something and then the next second i'd look down at the frame of the camera and in the picture he was actually kneeling down oh next to me with the ring handed out to me and I just it was one of those moments when everything stood still and I kind of just stared at the camera for a little bit and it took me a moment to turn around and I wish I'd kind of taken even more of a breath before I turned around because it was just such a beautiful moment to turn around what I've seen on this picture but he's actually on his knee with the ring asking me to marry him and he included Mia in the in asking me as well which was really really beautiful Wow. All right, you're getting me to tear up here. That's beautiful. You'll have to send us that photo. (laughs) You're listening to a special Christmas edition of The Story. Our guest today is once again Bethany Stagg, who now has a new surname, and she's getting us updated on all the exciting things that have happened in her life since a video of her singing a Christmas carol went viral a few years ago. Next, we'll hear more of her fairy tale ending and more of her singing. All that and more when we return. If this program has highlighted something you'd like prayer for, we'd love to pray for you. Call 1-800-PRAY-FOR-ME. That's 1-800-772-936. It's a free call. Or text 0401 132 888. Hi, I'm Jimmy Colfax, and this is a special Christmas edition of The Story. 
Today, Eric Scadabo is once again chatting with Bethany Stagg, who is now known as Bethany Langmaid, because there's been some big changes in her life since the last time she was on the program a few years ago. Before the break, we heard how a video of her singing a Christmas carol in an airport lounge went viral and was seen all over the world. But as we've been hearing, there's much more to the story than just that. Because the reporter who first interviewed her about the video, Aaron Langmaid, eventually became her boyfriend and then proposed to her. Now let's hear what happened next in Bethany's story. So at that point, you're engaged, but also there is another thing that Aaron learned about you that would cause possibly a challenge in the future. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I um, back when I was um, having my first daughter, they found that I had a type of kidney disease. And even back then, doctors had said that if they'd normally seen somebody with what I had and been pregnant, they would actually tell you to end the pregnancy. But I was really, really, really lucky to have the doctor that I had. And he said, look, I believe you're meant to be a mum. Let's get you through this. And, and he did. And soon after I had my daughter, um, she was eight weeks early as well, which we knew was always going to be possible because of um, my kidneys. It was mm-hmm. quite dangerous for my body. Um, mm. I then went on to have a number of years of pretty powerful medication that could unfortunately result in stopping the chance of me ever having children again Mm -hmm. and so um you know not only was he coming into a relationship with a single mum he was coming in to having someone that had gone through some pretty significant health problems and and there was the conversation that I was you know quite nervous to have to say look I, I don't know if I mean and this this was obviously said before you know, we were well into our relationship or even engaged, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. to actually have to say to someone, I'm not sure if we'll be able to have children together is a really heavy conversation. Yeah. And so he realized going into marriage with you, there was a very real possibility that he could not become a father or you, you couldn't have children. Yeah. And he knew, but I mean, I, I know, I, I remember it very vividly. His response was, well, we'll adopt. It mm-hmm. was just such a simple response, and so it was very, it was honest. You know, I mean, I I know, and I knew how much this man was meant to be a father, mm. and for him to experience a baby from the very beginning, his own, there is nothing like it. And so, I, I mean, I prayed very, very, very hard. I was, mm. you know, I was like, Lord, you need to help us. You know, you need to please bless us with this little baby, um, because you know, I knew that that was still possible. But the fact that he was willing to just forego that and go, you know what? There are plenty of children out there that need Mm -hmm. families. Well, you eventually get married, but I want to skip up to the very good news of what happens to your family. Yes. So pretty soon after we were married, I guess you could probably call our little girl a honeymoon baby. (laughs) 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 She um, she's now 14 months old. Her name is Ray and she is a little ray of sunshine. I'm trying to keep it together here. Oh, <laughs> oh that, that's beautiful. I mean, that's beautiful. Uh, I, I, still, I still can't... I still look at my, at my life now and, and just everything that it took to get to where we are right now and I still can't really wrap my head around it because... Like to look at these, you know, we've got this family of four and this, you know, 11-year-old girl that is the sweetest little girl, but my goodness, she's headstrong, you know, and then now we've got this other little girl and I'm pro- pretty sure she's going to be equally as headstrong, but we've got we've, we've got this beautiful little family that's our own and, and I think that there were many years that I just did not think that was going to be a possibility. Mm-hmm. And here you are today. Aaron is in the other room and your daughter is napping at this moment? I think so. I think she's actually gone to sleep, which is, it's pretty incredible (laughs) because we we went through a number of months where napping wasn't on her to-do list or sleeping through the night even. Um, But we've got her into quite a nice routine now. So um, we're quite, we're feeling quite sane about it all. And Aaron is no longer a journalist? No, no, he's not a journalist anymore. He's now a media advisor um, within uh, federal government. So a bit of a different role for him, Mm -hmm. but um, he's brilliant at that as well. And you're no longer a flight attendant. Well, you never were a flight attendant, but you never, <laughs> but you no longer work for an airline. I don't know. I think um, 
with the pregnancy, still knowing I needed to take care of myself during that. And Mm -hmm. with COVID, um, the opportunity came to leave the airline and and after 13 years I thought maybe it maybe it is time but no I've taken on the role as stay-at-home mum just for the probably the next couple of months at the very least anyway but you still have aspirations as a singer I do I do it's I mean it's it's very obvious to me now that this is a gift that I've been given and I I need to use it I would hate to I really would hate to get to the end of my life and and have God ask me what I did with it And I'd have to say nothing. So I think, you know, being the age I am now, I've still got time to to do something with it. And I think, you know, my my dreams have become a little bit um, smaller, you know, from the young, young Bethany that wanted to be famous and rich. And now I'd actually be really happy to be in a hotel lobby just singing songs for people. And to be honest, I, I don't even mind if people would really be listening. I would just love to be doing what I like and what I love. And Aaron is very supportive of your musical gift? Yeah, he's probably, apart from my parents, he's been the biggest support. He's encouraged me hugely to to do this, when, especially on days that you don't think that you're good enough or you look at other people that are out there and there's so many musicians, so many singers, and you think, well, what could I possibly bring that's not already out there? And he's, you know, he's just that person that comes alongside me and reminds me, you are good enough and there is a reason that you have this voice and people need to hear it. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. From now on, our troubles will be out of sight. Now, this conversation started talking about you singing a Christmas carol in a viral video. And I understand that you've been preparing some Christmas carols at our request in the garage. Is that right? Yeah, I've started very basic again in the garage with just our our phone, a keyboard. And yeah, I just thought I needed to start it again. But I thought, you know, what a better time to refresh that initial Christmas carol, but bring in some more, seeing as I love Mm -hmm. them and seeing as I love that time of year. Okay, we want to end with a Christmas song that you've prepared in your garage with your producer being your very supportive husband, Aaron. (laughs) But before we do that, let's find out what are your impressions of Christmas memories? Uh, I think if anyone just says Christmas to me, it brings up so much emotion of just hope. I think for me, Christmas is just this one time in the year that it is my favorite, hence Mm -hmm. the Christmas Carol. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't have any specific memories, but every memory of Christmas is happy. I've always felt Like no matter what's happened throughout the entire year, Christmas just seems to be this miraculous time of year that anything can happen and you can hope for anything. Bethany Stagg, or I should say your new surname is Bethany Langmaid. Thank you so much for sharing your wonderful hope-filled story. Thank you, Eric. I really appreciate it. They looked up and saw a star shining in the east. Beyond them far and to the earth It gave great light And so it continued both day and night No well, no well, no well, no well Born is the King of Israel Well, that was a special story Bethany Stagg has, or should I say Bethany Langmaid, as she now has a new surname. Also, it was great to hear her sing another Christmas carol. If you'd like to find out more about Bethany and her singing, she now has her own website. It's bethanystagg.com. That's bethanystagg, S-T-A-G-G, dot com. Finally, we'll end today with an appropriate Bible verse for this time of year. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Well, from all of us here at The Story, we want to wish you God's richest blessings on you and your family during this Christmas season and throughout the year. We pray that you have a wonderful time together celebrating the good news of God, sending His Son, Jesus, to earth, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. 
Amen. Well, thanks for joining us for an update on Bethany's amazing story. I'm Jimmy Colfax, encouraging you to share your story with someone today. Next time on The Story. I adored Christmas as a child and basically when I turned nine, my parents separated and it just took on a whole different turn for me. Not having that family unit and separating yourself and you're so used to the tradition of your family that when something like that happens, I just remember feeling this heaviness and this void when it came to Christmas. When you think of a storybook Christmas, you often think of warm scenes of families being together. But unfortunately for many people, Christmas also has a bit of sadness mixed in. Hazel Ray is a singer and songwriter, and she's written a Christmas song that contains a bit of both. She'll share the story behind that song next time. The Story. Just another way vision is connecting faith to life. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.